Today, there were violent clashes in Pakistan's capital, Islamabad, as protesters continued to call on the country's Prime Minister, Nawaz Sharif, to step down. At one point, they occupied the headquarters of the state broadcaster, but were eventually ousted by security forces. Rounds of negotiations have failed to end the unrest that has gripped the country for more than two weeks. For more, I spoke a brief time ago with Shuja Nawaz, the director of the South Asia Centre at the Atlantic Council. What is at the heart of the protesters' frustration? Their frustration is really against the inability of the government to respond to their request for uh, looking at the elections uh, that were held over a year ago. And uh, some of the, the results were suspect. Uh, the prime minister and his team uh, refused to acknowledge these complaints. Uh, and then it's escalated ever since. And it's deteriorated into essentially mob rule uh, with people that were elected uh, ignoring the irony of their action instead of preserving and protecting the constitution of the country that they want to now upend the elected government. Is there a real possibility of another military coup in Pakistan? You can never dismiss that possibility, but it's going to be extremely difficult for the military to take over because they don't have any political party waiting in the wings. That's been the pattern in the past. All the opposition parties have coalesced behind the prime minister, and uh, he hopes to bring a joint session of parliament together for the next few days uh, to solidify that constitutional support. Uh, and so he's on a pretty strong uh, wicket as far as the constitution is concerned. The, the fact is that the military uh, is fighting a big war uh, against militants uh, on the western border. They have their hands full. Uh, and indeed, and because of that, do you think Washington is watching all this with some anxiety? Absolutely, because what happens in Pakistan affects what happens in Afghanistan. Uh, and as Washington prepares to end its fighting in Afghanistan and to withdraw troops from there, it doesn't want an unstable Pakistan, uh, which would create a huge contagion effect in the region. So what do you think the way out of this crisis is for the Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif? Can he concede to some of the, desire, the demands of the protesters, do you Absolutely. think? Obviously, he doesn't want to resign, but... Absolutely. Uh, the resignation was one of the six demands put forward by Imran Khan, who is one of the two leaders that has brought uh, this mob uh, attack onto the capital. Uh, he could concede on the other four or five demands, which all deal with uh, improving the election commission, uh, improving the, uh, the election monitoring, and, and looking at the results and auditing them to see whether there was any fraud in four seats or maybe 10. And how unified are the protesters? They are separate but uh, unified in the sense that they're two different groups, a religious group and Imran Khan's political party. They're primarily youth, but interestingly, you don't have the widespread street uh, protests throughout the country, uh, which, would be, uh, which would be a cause for alarm. And that's why this is kind of dragging on and on. Shuja Nawaz, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.